Hey guys, my name is Connie and today I'll show you how to do a parallax movement on scroll. Um, if you haven't watched this video yet, please watch it because it will show you um, the fundamentals on how it works, but this is more of a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up basically what they have here first because they don't show that. I'm going to show that this is beginner friendly and hopefully um, it's going to be helpful for you. So this is going to be the break. So the first thing we'll do is set up the images, resize them, add them. And then the second thing we'll do is add absolute and relative and adjust the Z index. Third one, we're going to animate them. And the fourth one is reminders and tips and tricks on how to make parallax movement make sense. Okay, so I'm starting from a blank slate. So the first thing that we want to do is add the images. I have linked down below the folder of all the images that I use. They're basically random images that I have, but you can download that and upload that drag and drop into Webflow. So we're going to either control E, I like to control E um, and add image, choose your images. And it's gonna be really large, but we're going to fix that momentarily. We're going to label this class image dash wrapper or image dash wrapper. There we go. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is let's start with a width of 200 so we can make it smaller. And then let's just add a little rounded border and a box shadow. So we're going to lower the opacity. It's just stylistic choices. So when they start stacking above each other, it um, you can see the height difference. So let's increase the blur and maybe the size a little bit. Perfect. So now we have this image wrapper taken care of. We're gonna add four more and adjust the sizes to those two. So you can control C, control V and paste three more times. Double click to replace the image. And let's do that. Double click. Place an inch. So as you can see, they're all about the same size. So if you do want to make them different sizes, all you have to do is do a child class. So you can say, this is the bench and adjust the size to say 350. And it'll increase the size, but it won't affect the other one. If you were to affect this image wrapper, since this is the original one, if I were to increase it to 700, it's going to increase all of them to about that size. So that is, let's go back. So we're just going to change the images. So it's in blue and adjust the sizes. So we have a little bit variety. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna go on to absolute and relative. This is important because these images are gonna be stacking on each other. So it's important to understand this concept. All right, so what you wanna do is select the original image wrapper. Oh, before we do that, select on the div block or the parent element. So make sure your images are encased into a div block or a section, and you wanna select on that and select relative. I already have it on relative, but the relative is all the absolute items, so these ones, are going to attach to the relative. So you want to select image wrapper and change this to absolute. And all of them are going to stack like this. This is what you want. Don't worry about it. It is going to be perfectly fine. So what you want to do is select the second one, image wrapper. It has a, we labeled it bench. So the edits that we make to this one won't affect the other ones. So what you wanna do is just start spreading them out like this in different areas. Select the next one, we're on blue. So we'll select here. This is a stylistic choice. You can add them wherever you want. Doesn't really matter. This one is music. And we're going to have that maybe like this.
something like that. Just adjust it however you'd like. We're gonna just stagger it like this. All right, so that's absolute and relative. So as you can see, they are stacking on top of each other. As you can see here, you can't quite see it here since um, they're not on top of each other. But if you do have a preference on which item to be on top and which to be at the bottom, that's where Z index comes in. So for example, let's say this is the top one, the higher the Z index, the top layer it will be. If it's a smaller Z index, then it's going to be in the background. So this is going to have a three and this would, this Z index would probably be a two. So it'd be behind it. But if you want this image to be on top, all you have to do is make it higher than the other number. Oh my bad. Let's label this dinner. And make this C index. This is this is four, so let's make this five. So as you can see, it's now on top. The reason why it was a four, it changed to a four, is because this was the parent element. So this one had an image wrapper as well. So that default to change all of them to a Z index of four. Okay, so let's move on to the animation. So for the animation, what you want to do is select the div block four, and we're going to add a trigger at the top, right? All right, so now we're going to hit the plus button and while scroll in view, we're going to select an action, play scroll animation, and we're going to create a new scroll animation down here. Perfect. So I am, you can label it whatever you want. But now the first thing that we're going to do is select an animate. So we're going to select on this image wrapper, hit this plus button, and select move. You see these exclamation uh, warning signs, exclamation marks? If you do run into a problem, I'll link a description, I'll link a video in the description box below or a card somewhere up here. Um, where you can help troubleshoot that if you do accidentally detour. All right, so it can either affect a whole class or it can affect the selected element. I would recommend doing selected element just because it's a little bit easier once you get more advanced and comfortable playing around with it. You can do affect class because if all of them are image wrapper classes, then it's going to affect them all at the same time, which you don't want since you want them to animate at different pastes. Perfect. So, Let's say image wrapper, we're going to start at the top. Oh, why is it not moving? It's going to. Okay, so what you want to do is. Well, so we're working on this image right here. And the reason why it's all the way up there is because the zero position is going to be up here and it's going to move downwards. So I put the negative. I mean, I put the Y at negative 226. And if you have live preview on, you get to see that it moved all the way up there. And then the image wrapper at the bottom at the zero position, we're going to make that go downwards. So if we do live preview, you can see it's moving down. Normally it would adjust. So while you increase or decrease, it would move. Um, but for some reason, if it doesn't work for you, like what it just did for me, just select live preview on and you get to see the changes. So we're just going to do the same thing for all of them. So this one, as it goes downwards, we're going to probably move this one to go upwards. So again, select on the image, hit the plus button, select move. Oh, and what I did was that instead of changing image wrapper and blue, we're just going to adjust the blue class. Oh, sorry. You can either do blue class or selected image, which I did. Um, yes. And then we're going to move the Y position to be lower. So it's going to start down here. And then you want to add move. And then we're going to increase it. So now they are going to be moving in two different directions, just like that. 
Perfect. And all you have to do is do the same for the other two images and you're good to go. Um, it's more prominent, the parallax movement, when you have more elements and especially if they're stacking on top of each other. Um, to have that parallax movement, uh, this is part tip number four, the reminders. For the images that are up close, you might want to make them larger, um, the images larger or faster. You definitely want to make them faster and the ones that are farther in the back to make them slower. So you can adjust that by their positions. So the higher they are and then the lower, um, it will either slow it down or speed it up and you can play around with that. So yeah, I hope this gave you a better foundation um, starting from zero to animation. And if it was, please give me a like and subscribe. Check out the other animations that I have done below. Thank you.